Well, it is Palm Sunday, and we're going to do something a little special this morning. I wonder where the children are. Oh, sorry.
Well, there is more to the story. After Jesus um, came into the city later in the day, he and his disciples prepared for the Passover supper. And during that meal, where they actually ate bread and drank wine, Jesus knew that one of those disciples would betray him. That was Judas, right? That's right. And Judas had already made a deal with the religious leaders. And that night after the meal in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus, Judas betrayed Jesus with a kiss on the cheek. And that was how the soldiers knew who Jesus was. So they could arrest Jesus. But by that time it was too late. And Judas finally realized the horrible thing that he had done to Jesus. And it was too late. Judas understood that Jesus was now going to be put to death. And because he was so sad, Judas actually took his life that very night. We remember the Last Supper, Jesus' betrayal and his death on Monday, Thursday. And we're going to have a special service this Thursday to remember the night that Jesus was betrayed, but also the night when he gave us the tradition of the Lord's Supper. Yes, it is a very sad story, but our story is not over yet. The story doesn't end with sadness and grief and death. We know what's going to happen this week, but the story is going to end with a resurrection and with the promise of new life for all who believe in Jesus. We get to talk about that part of the story next week. That is right. But today we get to celebrate. And so we'll need to wait to the next week to hear the very best part of the story. So thank you all for helping us to celebrate Palm Sunday. And before you go off to Sunday school, can we pray together? Would you pray with me? Dear God, we thank you for the good news that we celebrate today on Palm Sunday. And we thank you for each and every child who is with us today to celebrate your triumphal entry on this special day. We are excited because Jesus loved us so much that he came to save us and to show us God's love. And even though we know that Jesus died on the cross, we also know that the best news is yet to come. And so we thank you for loving us so much. We pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Hosanna! Let's thank our children as they head off to Sunday school. Hosanna! 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 I think stage fright sat in there a little bit. We're going to have to do more. Yeah, we'll have to do more of this. They were really good with their rehearsal last week. And Karen was the office. Yes, and Karen was the one who found the skit and put it all together for us and made sure we had the video and the other teachers helped rehearse it. So thanks to our Christian Ed team for putting that together. Yes, we'll have to do more of that. Um, I think they really enjoyed it. They've been so excited the past several weeks working on it. But before we begin, Liz, is there something? Yeah, no, I just wanted to say um, the child in me never knew all this when I was growing up. <coughs> so it's helpful for me, too. <laughs> amen, amen. And that's what our Christian education program is intended to do, is ensure that as children they do learn these stories, these familiar narratives and stories that uh, some of us learned as we were growing up and some of us didn't. Um, when I taught new members uh, courses at Salem Baptist Church, um, one year we actually dramatized Palm Sunday, and of course they had a much larger, um, they have an auditorium that seats about 10,000 people, but we had a live donkey um, that we brought in and sort of paraded through the, uh, the paths. I was actually sitting there thinking, I wonder if we could bring a donkey and just <laughs> have it cross and come back. We probably have enough room to get it. 
trying to dress up like right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be a bathroom. Yeah. But the next week uh, during our classes, we had so many people who were in our new members courses. I would say 70% of the people who took these, uh, they used to be 27 weeks and then they were 22 weeks. People were asking, what was the donkey thing all about? <laughs> what was the poem stuff going on? And we had to basically suspend our lessons. I had a class of about 40 people on my Tuesday night. We had three nights in a week when we had these new members classes. And I had to stop and teach these adults what Palm Sunday was all about. And so we learned that we can never take for granted that everybody knows these stories. We can never take for granted that everybody really understands the language or the symbolism. So it's really important, and Liz has just attested to it, that we tell these stories. Um, this is part of our tradition. This is part of our sharing the tradition of our faith with our children, with new members in the faith, and to remind us all how important it is. I'm not going to preach long today, but I am going to just point out a couple of things about the story that we've been talking about. Our good friend B.J. Barlow posted a, uh, a Facebook page, and I just laughed because when B.J. was here when I first came as interim, I used to tell B.J. that he was called to ministry. B.J. was like, no, 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 I'm going to do a master's in music, and he wanted nothing to happen. And so B.J., as he has now finished seminary, he and I have lots of uh, private Facebook messages, lots of phone conversations even about sermons. And so he posted on the, uh, his Facebook page that in his uh, research, he had learned that the symbol of the donkey was not necessarily the uh, symbol that Jesus was coming in humility as though it were some sort of downgraded position. But kings in the ancient world entered the city on donkeys. And we know of at least one king, Solomon, who on his way to actually be anointed king in the ancient Israel world, they would anoint you with oil when it was your turn to be king. Solomon rode into the city to enter the temple to be anointed on a donkey. A king would go to war on a horse, but to symbolize peace, he entered the city on a donkey. So lest we think that Jesus was entering the city with his head bowed down, saying, oh me, I'm so lowly. What he was actually doing was allowing, for one of the only times in his ministry, allowing the people to worship him openly, inviting them to worship him openly. There is a text in Zechariah that talks about the king, your king comes unto you riding on a donkey. So Jesus is directly fulfilling the prophecy in Zechariah, and he's also allowing them to utter those wonderful words from the Psalms, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. There's no other reference to Jesus ever being in a position where the people are openly praising and worshiping him. But even as he enters Jerusalem to begin what will be the last week of his life, he is allowing them to anoint him king by spreading their coats in the path of the donkey, by waving the palm branches, by even saying those words, Hosanna, save us, you who come in the name of the Lord, save us. And we know because of the terror of the Roman Empire that their vision of what a savior would be would be that he would be a mighty king who would create a new government and totally destroy the Roman Empire. We know that the disciples, at least two of them, James and John, their mother asked, would you please put the boys, one on the left and one on your right, give them special jobs when you come into your kingdom. Jesus never promised that. But for this moment in time, he allowed them, even encouraged them, to worship him as a triumphant king, as someone who had power and victory. And on Palm Sunday, we need to remember that we serve a risen Lord, someone who not only has power, not the earthly kind of power that's manifested by fancy homes and fancy limousines and fancy clothes and uh, earthly governance and power, but power that he gives each one of us to navigate the ups and downs of this world, power that he gives us to be wonderful examples of his love, of his redemption, 
power that he gives us to move past the difficult seasons in life, power that he gives us to be strong when things don't go the way we want, power that he gives us to love beyond our even understanding, power that he gives us to love and work together when we don't understand, when we don't agree. That's real power. None of us on our own can do all of those things. But today we celebrate the power of this triumphant king who welcomes our praise, who bids us to worship him. And I hope as we move through our service, the last few songs that we have, before we get out of here, if you haven't raised your palms once, please raise them. He bids you to worship him. There may be moments of exuberance. Your way of praising may be in quiet meditation. But on Palm Sunday, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen.